Hey everyone, today we're talking about the second way to feed your plants, and that's foliar feeding. The primary way a plant eats and consumes nutrients is through its root zone, as we know. But the second way, and really an effective way to feed a plant, is through the bottom sides of their leaves. Let's take a look at this leaf anatomy very quickly. At the bottom sides of the leaves, you can see the stoma. Also, stomata in plural form. Those are the small pores on the bottom sides of the leaves that open and close and exchange gas out and in to allow the plant to breathe and respirate. In a typical daytime cycle, the stoma are used to open and close, absorb CO2, and push out oxygen. But in that process, it also has the ability to suck in water. So inside of this water, we can make a recipe of different plant nutrients and vitamins that the plant can uptake through the secondary source. It's typically much more efficient and effective and instant than giving a plant these nutrients through their root zone. Also, if you have very expensive nutrients you want to provide to your plants and do it very quickly through the leaves and typically the back sides of the leaves is the best way to do it. So today I'm gonna to go through my favorite recipe that I use on all of these plants that I've used for years. And remember that foliar feeding is always a supplement to root feeding. It's never a substitute for it. But I've got these obliquas here and they are historically a very challenging plant to grow and to get very green leaves out of. But all of a sudden, after foliar feeding, I've got very green, healthy leaves coming out of the tops here, and I wanna show you that recipe that's helping these plants along. So a great place to start when you have issues like this, like this yellowing at the leaf, but you're already doing so much in the root zone, is to start with a foliar feed, and I'm gonna go through that right now. So naturally, with foliar feeding, you're gonna need an applicator, a spray bottle, or something to spray onto the back sides of your leaves, some water, a surfactant, this is something to break the surface tension of your leaves. This is typically either a soap or an oil. So I use either neem oil or dish soap. You can also use peppermint soap or even like some sort of uh, essential oil drop, but just use about one or two drops per gallon. There's no sense in buying an overpriced water whiter product. You can also use coconut oil or something alike. The primary base for this foliar feed is going to be our root boost. So in that I have liquid kelp, or this is powderized kelp for now, and we're gonna liquefy it. I have a little bit of humic acid. I have silica, and I have vitamin B1 or Super Thrive. So starting with the gallon of water, if you're using silica, which is a really great supplement, shout out to a few people in the comments that turned me on to using silica. I'm testing it in propagation, and it's looking very promising, but the foliar feeding of it is doing wonders. So I'm gonna use about two to three milliliters of this per gallon of water. And this is 7.8% silica. You can find it on our website and there's many different vendors that sell silica. So I'm gonna put three mils of silica in the water. Remember, always do your silica first. If you don't, you'll see why not because it will kind of become a salt inside of your water instantly. Mix that up and always mix each nutrient once you get it into the water. Because it's a two for one as a surfactant and pest control, I'm going to use neem oil that contains azadiractin at about three mLs per gallon of water. This is 3% azadiractin, but I'll link to a 1.2% one that you can find on Amazon. This one's very expensive per gallon, about $800 a gallon. So I don't suggest to use this one for your typical household use. Again, mixing well in between each product, just like a recipe or you would be in baking. Put in a product, mix it up, then go to the next product. So now we have silica and neem oil in this water. We're starting to get a little bit of a cloudy water, but we're really gonna get the color change with about one teaspoon per gallon of the powderized kelp, or you can also find this in our root boost, which contains humic acid and this powderized kelp. And when you put that in, there's your big color change in the water. Now we have a good like brown water. We add in kelp because kelp is a natural plant hormone and helps aid with cell division. It's a great source of potassium for your root zone. This as it stands is a great foliar feed and it's typically what I do. But if you wanna keep going with it, I'm gonna add in a little bit of humic acids. This is a quarter teaspoon per gallon of water, so very little, stuff is very strong, but also is contained in a root boost or you can find it in a powderized form. Next up is our vitamin B1, or you can use Super Thrive as a substitute. I'm going to use one ml per gallon of foliar feed. Vitamin B1 helps with transplant shock 
and overall well-being of a plant, just like it does for us humans. It's a very good general vitamin. Now here we've got our brown water. And finally, this is an optional step, but ideally you add some lemon to your water here or you add some pH down. Now you're gonna add in that pH down or that lemon, which I have here, a few drops of pH down, will bring the pH of this water down into about six so that it flows into the chemistry of your plant very stably. The water inside the xylem and the phloem of your plant should be around 6.0 to begin with. So I'm going to mix that up, a little bit of pH down. As I said, you can also use lemon or something else that's citrus like lime. And as I said, a lot of these ingredients are pretty expensive on their own. That's why I'm not mixing up 100 gallons of them at once, but I'm going to equally treat each one with just a little bit of spray. So a little bit of spray goes a long way, you'll see. You don't need a pH meter, but they're about 10 bucks off Amazon, and they're great to have around if you're doing LECA or starting to do kind of deeper dives on your plant care journey. But whatever you're spraying onto your leaves, ideally is pH. There's a bit of controversy about this, but I'm a big fan of pHing anything that goes onto or around my plants. A little bit more drops of pH down should bring my pH towards six. Just so you guys can see, here is my pH reading right around six, 5.8, 5.9. It's exactly what we want to see. As I said, this is not a crucial step, but if you want to get everything perfect, ideally you pH the water on and around your plant. We'll get our water into our spray bottle. I love these big, almost half gallon spray bottles you can get at Home Depot. They're by the brand name of Zep. I think it's for like commercial paint or pesticide spraying, but I almost never get clogging with them. And if you do get clogging, it's really easy to get it out. Make sure you shake this up very well. And this is the most important part, and this can be applied for when you do neem also. Spray the back sides of your leaves, every single plant. So I'm gonna get a plant over here close to you guys. You're going to hold the plant at a bit of an angle and you're gonna come from the bottom side of it and spray the back side of the plant and you're going to completely drench the plant. Go all the way around. It takes a lot of time, as you can imagine with all these plants, but that's how it's done. And go plant by plant, and if you're doing a larger area, you can turn this thing on a bit of a harder spray and spray everything at once. Thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. If you did enjoy this week's video, click the like button down below and consider subscribing since we make two videos every week about houseplants. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.